Well, the Riverhounds won one to nothing against Loud United here at Highmark Stadium on Saturday night. I'm Matt Geica alongside Jordan Smith. But as Coach Bob Lilly called it, it was a hollow three points. Pittsburgh moves into a first place tie in the Atlantic Division after Tampa Bay lost to Miami at home. So there they are right there at the top where they wanted to be. Uh, but Jordan, despite improving to 5-1-2 and two in their past eight, uh, Lily and the Hounds not pleased with the performance. They felt like they were, well, they were outpossessed, literally 60 to 40 yeah. percent here by Loudon tonight. And uh, even though the Hounds had advantages in shots and crosses, they just felt like they were, they were too naive with the ball. They gave it up cheaply. Um, they, they were not patient. And coming off a 10-day break, maybe some of that is some rust. But uh, overall, it was a pretty somber tone after a win, for sure. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel like they came out with the win, according to Bob. But um, yeah, this, some teams throughout the league uh, in the division helped them out with uh, the standings that is. Now they're up at first. But uh, Cicerone, career high in goals now, um, all time for him with six. That was the one bright spot. But the first half, they didn't give up a single shot. But at the end of the game, Bob's still saying they, di they didn't defend well. Still saying it was a sloppy performance from them, uh, trying to cut corners defensively, he was saying. But yeah, even though they win one nothing, it, it doesn't matter. Bob still yelled at them for like at least a half hour <laughs> after the game. So win or lose, Bob Bob still might do that. So uh, yeah, the players better uh, put together some better performances and and get those goals because this should have been a two three nothing win, and that way you don't have to get yelled at uh, for a <laughs> half hour after the game. <laughs> Uh, Bob alluded to this in his post-game press conference, too, that uh, he thought maybe there was some emotional letdown here. That's back-to-back -back poor performances against Loudon. Of course, they lost yeah. to Loudon out there in Virginia. You were there for that one a yeah. couple of weeks ago, part of that 10 games and 40-day stretch that they persevered through and really got some nice results out of. But here tonight, the win, uh, despite being out-possessed, and in a lot of ways, they felt outclassed so uh, here we are Jordan seven four and three is the Hounds record 24 points like I said tied for the top spot in the Atlantic Division uh, that's no small feat but uh, the results at this point probably flatter Pittsburgh I would say and just yeah. judging from the matches I've watched here live and and on TV as well it's a team that doesn't look like it has it all put together maybe uh, you, you talked to Russell Cicerone after the match like we did he thought he got off to a hot start this season, but he feels like he's cooled off individually. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys are probably looking at themselves and saying, I can do a lot better than I have. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of guys that say, you know, I shouldn't have one goal in the season. I should have three or four or five. I think uh, Deke was probably a player thinking that. Maybe Dixon as well. I mean, I think a lot of them have played pretty well. And like Bob said, they've had good stretches where they go out and, and crush Tampa Bay and have a great first half but they just don't seem to be doing it consistently. And I think that's why Bob is having so many of these talks after the game. It's because he's fed up with these, uh, you know, not too great wins or with these ties that should be wins. And because he knows this team, if they're going to make a deep playoff run, they have to get rid of these, you know, weak results going on. Um, so, yeah, he's just um, – Bob just isn't pleased 100%. He wants to fix it now, and that way they're the team that everyone's looking at, like – yeah, they're the top of the table. This is a team you don't want to face in the in the playoffs. And I think uh, furthermore on that point uh, as well, you compare this team to the last full season Riverhound squad 2019. That team was 2-2-7 two, two and seven, uh, early in the year. Right around maybe this point of the season, of course, this season's a little bit shortened. Um, it's more compact in terms of schedule. But there's still time to catch fire. There's still time to, to get things going. But my one concern for them, I would say, my biggest concern is that it's a rather inexperienced slash new back line, yeah. and uh, and the Hounds aren't playing with the ball enough to protect that back line. I think Denny Vidiello is dynamite in goal. I think he's a yeah, solid keeper good. in this league. But uh, right now you have a couple of guys out on international duty yeah. on uh, on defense as well. So it's inconsistent back there. The least you could do, I think, as a group of midfielders and forwards, is play with the ball more. And I think situationally they're just they're falling short. Maybe it's a mental sharpness thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe it's it's a fitness thing. I'm not sure. Perhaps they haven't quite uh, caught their, their full stride here. Those are questions that Lily and the staff have to answer. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on where they are right now? You did that River Hounds roundtable with John yeah. Krasinski mm -hmm. and Mark Goodman this past week. So you talked a lot about that. After you see them here, are you willing to say, okay, it's one match and, and we'll see how they perform going forward? Or does this cause you to, to start to worry because you've seen some performances like this through the first what quarter to a third of the season yeah what you're saying now it's there's been a few of these and and I was at the Loudon match where they dropped that and lost two to one I mean um, Bob said so himself that was just a horrendous loss 
So yeah, there's been too many of these. I still don't think they've found the identity. Um, I agree with what you said with the back line. It hasn't been perfectly sharp back there. Um, they, those guys need to be a bit more technical, but they do have um, Dover, Peters, and Williams are all out right now mm -hmm. uh, internationally, and, and Dover's out with the injury. So, I mean, they, they do have three guys that could be used in back there right now, so that doesn't help the situation. But, yeah, they, they still need some things to figure it out. Um, they're 7-4-3. and three. It's not awful, but I think Bob would be much happier if they were, like, 9-2-3, and three, mm -hmm. have, like, an extra two wins in the pocket there. But... Um, oh, well, I mean, they got more time to improve, so still about two-thirds of the season left, so we'll see. So much of the season played on the razor's edge so far for the yeah. Hounds. They've been fortunate to, to get more results on the positive side than on the negative, and uh, those sterling performances have been too few and far between. Coming up on Friday, they'll go to New York Red Bulls, too. As uh, Coach Lilly and Russell Cisroni said after the, the match, they'll have to be much better against a team that loves to push the pace. They just beat the Red Bulls, too, here at Highmark Stadium a couple of weeks back. That was their first home win, yep. in fact. They're now 3-2-1 uh, two and one here at home, so uh, they did move above that mark for the first time this season. But uh, some work to do on the training ground behind us, that's for sure, coming up, as they'll take on a squad that usually pushes you. They'll give you a challenge, uh, Will the Baby Bulls. So we'll talk to you next time. Of course, we'll have full coverage of Riverhounds' continued 2021 season right here on Pittsburgh Soccer Now.